How you feeling today? Uh, well, you see, uh, I bleed for this show. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna show the lone finger because I think um, that would get this uh, flag. I, I bleed, I sweat, I cry. Mostly cry for this show. I type a lot on my keyboard and click a lot on my mouse for this show. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Welcome back to The Spiel. If, if you've been tuning in, you know that we're taking you on a journey. We've been to Nashville. We've been to Missouri. We've been to... Why, why can't it sound more exotic than that, right? But anyway, um, the idea is to bring you the stories of people that you want to know more about. And we're also, along the way, learning a little bit more about our cast and crew and what I thought was funny about the last show. What did you guys name the Where Did Riley Put His Camera Bit? Uh, where's Riley's where's camera? Where's Riley's camera, right? That was funny stuff. Hey, Riley, where's your camera? Oh, <laughs> over there. <laughs> but anyway, we want you to stay tuned because we have so much more of that content coming your way. Apparently, um, they're thinking that it's a good idea to build in more game shows, more competitions. And uh, we, of course, want to give you what you want. So go ahead and write in to us and, and let us know what that is. And, you know, everybody wants more Elvis Presley. That I is true. Explain. Yeah. Yeah. So did you know, and, and this is why social media is, is so fascinating. And, and I heard a, an interview the other night with Priscilla um, so Elvis apparently was a big time germaphobe. I didn't know that, honestly. Big time. How, who knew that? No. I've never met the guy. Big time germaphobe. So much so, he, would, he was kind, but he would take his own silverware, like to your home, to a restaurant. And then the other super cool thing that I saw demonstrated, if you offered him um, something to drink, he would maybe ask for a cup. And the reason he would ask for a cup is he knew that he had a better chance of not putting his mouth where other people's mouths had been. He drinks where the handle is, like that. Oh, wow. So, like, he just, like, wanted to cut out any possible yes. chance. and he was very polite about it. And if you didn't know, you wouldn't know. Something uh, I don't think anybody here knows about me is I used to go to therapy for germophobia. You did, so yeah. it's a real and, thing. And so when I went to therapy, my therapist, uh, in order to sort of comfort me, told me that a lot of very you know prominent, famous people live with it throughout their lives and still are successful. Uh, Elvis, Howie Mandel. Yes, you wouldn't uh, even know. Several it. other people, mm -hmm. and so like that really changed my perspective on it because uh, I was able to cope with a lot of those things, and um, now here I am just getting through famous life, so. on the spiel yeah, famous and, on and, the you know spiel. i mean it figures <laughs> um across the entire midwest everybody knows my name and you know we need to talk about this um the star that played elvis um austin butler i mean rave reviews look at the trouble look right in my face and there you go. She's getting the approval there of the young man who played Elvis and could apparently play not only Elvis, the young Elvis, but the, you know, the progressive Elvis as he reached that height of stardom. And then, of course, um, the Elvis that was, you know, on the downward spiral. And apparently, per uh, Priscilla, he did not know. He did not realize he was as sick as he was, which is also hmm. sad. And, and, then, and then towards the end, you know, he was making some... Some not so healthy choices. Questionable at best. Yeah. You're a rock star, but you also you're important to a lot of people. So like, That's how right. do you take care of yourself when a world of people expects you to, you know, do things and be a certain way? That's right. Um, so it it was just not really a good combination. Yeah. Well, I thought this would be a good combination because mm -hmm. do you want to give like, I, I think, Rob, don't you think like the best impersonation since that's some of what this <laughs> show oh, is? So good, yeah, yeah I, I think that would be good. <laughs> Just a seated position. So there needs to be no hip thrusting or whatever. 
um, <laughs> as Elvis would. I don't think our audience could handle it. Okay. There, but did he break the stigma okay. to allow hip thrusting to be okay. seen full okay. frame? <laughs> okay. So, um, as with everything that we do, there's absolutely no time to warm up or prepare. No. Okay. <laughs> so um, we have one day. We have like 27 people in the in the mm -hmm. crowd here. Full right. Audience. Full studio right. audience. Okay. So who goes first? Rock, okay. paper, scissors. Oh, Prescott is. Actually, I'll just throw okay. myself into the fire. There he goes. All right. All right. Yes, Elvis. Need some time to relax and think. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> was that Nixon or was that Elvis? I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it was a little Nixon. A little Nixon. Okay, a little Elvis. All right. What you got? Oh, well, you see, people, um, Elvis was a very important and prominent man. Uh, and he really changed the way that the American people view their hips, uh, <laughs> particularly the groin. And, uh, well, people, I think that Elvis changed how people view uh, rock and roll. That's, that's all I got. Dang. <laughs> that's way better than mine. Okay. That was, that was, that was good, guys. <laughs> But apparently you both stink compared to um, some of that we have coming up on the show today. Uh, Tim Estilos, he always gets the good gigs, yeah, right? Yeah, he does. So he's getting to interview that legendary, um, he's uh, an impersonator, Rich Little. If you don't know the name, you need to look him up. He can do like 200 prominent people, presidents. He's been called on to roast some of the most famous people, but a, a very, very funny guy. Tim, take it away. And I knew this was going to be my lifetime work because it wasn't long before the teachers were charging a two drink minimum and a cover charge. There's one winner, guys. There's rules. I don't think there are shit. There's no rules. It's the weekend and your symptoms are worsening. The morning of a big meeting and you have a bigger sore throat. Ever experienced that urgency after picking up your sick child and your community health center has already closed? You will be able to connect to a provider at crhpc.org. Even if you have never been to CRHPC, you are welcome to utilize our services. Feel better after scheduling a video visit with CRHPC. We do IV sedation in our practice. I've been doing it for about 17 years. The big advantage of IV sedation is obviously for people that are scared to go to the dentist. It makes them feel relaxed, comfortable, and sleepy. It's also good because we do longer procedures sometimes, and we can do multiple procedures in one visit. It's something that makes us unique and is a great service to the public because there's no one else in the area that does that. So it is a jam-packed show. It's it's kind of original. It's kind of unique in that we have figured out that people love to see behind the cameras. They love to see the cast and the crew and everything that we do and admitting, you know, our faults and strengths and weaknesses and, and things that, um, that uh, we find funny. <laughs> because if we find it funny, it's probably really funny. True. Yeah, we have good senses of humor, right, people? Exactly. For the most part. <laughs> so it was it was interesting because this particular show, we're doing not only a, a, rarely have we done two of these type things, a competition and then a little bit of a teamwork exercise. Mm -hmm. And this was by your design, I guess? So we had a little bit of a, um, a I guess a snafu, you could call it, in scheduling. But we had a great... <laughs> Meaning that the guests fell through and no one was available and yeah. no one called ahead and we had a great sponsor though for sort of a cook-off yes uh, big muddy hogs yes um, good they stuff. were gracious enough to give us some meat and then uh rob and shane took to the frying pan <laughs> and dun, dun, dun. went crazy and so you guys are yeah that's good that's good yeah. that's good stuff and then your idea of a fear factor-ish although angie has banned all creepy crawly bitey things so there is a what's in the box what's yeah. in the box mystery i'm calling it fun factor legally distinct <laughs> uh, because there can only be fun things inside and not actual scary things we'll see <laughs> how you feel when you get to it oh i don't plan to feel much of anything <laughs> at all so figure it out keep going this is terrible oh stop riley <laughs> yeah but um 
All right, now we, we talked about this earlier, but uh, we, we even have a slide of this guy. But this is Rich Little, and I don't know, you know, depending on your generation and, and your age, you may or may not know him. But this guy, um, he's now written a book, and he talks about not only living his life um, as this guy and a famous impersonator, but how he has met so many powerful and influential people and presidents and not only met them, made fun of a lot of them, you know, roasted a lot of them and has just gone on to uh, really just be an icon. And Tim Estilos uh, does get to sit down and he spends some time with the um, world famous Rich Little and he talks about how he is able to tackle 200 prominent personalities and 12 presidents. Tim? This is Richard. How I love to be president next <laughs> time. I want to tell you, you know, my fellow Americans, I just got back from Hollywood where I was working on a new motion picture. It's called Planet of the Tapes. Rich, it's a pleasure to chat with you about your career and so forth. You've had such a long, illustrative career. It's a pleasure to meet with you this way. Well, thank you very much, Tim. Thank you. Now, as I said, your career spans decades back, back to, let's say, the 1960s. You have 200 personalities in your repertoire of impressions and 12 presidents that your career has spanned. I'd like to go to the beginning. When did you first realize that you had this gift for impressions? Well, I started imitating teachers at school. And I knew this was going to be my lifetime work because it wasn't long before the teachers were charging a two drink minimum and a cover charge. <laughs> well, what were some of the first impressions that you did with that, that really hit it big with the, your audience, if you will? Yeah, the first movie star that I ever imitated was Jimmy Stewart. And I can remember uh, sitting down at the dinner table when I was about 15 and I said to my mom, uh, Mom, I, 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 I want a piece of apple pie, pie. That was the word that I, that I first did as Jimmy, Jimmy Stewart. And then I found out later that his horse was called pie. Now, the way I understand it, Dr. Kane said that Miss Marple said that the knife that was found in the back of Sir Reginald <laughs> was the same knife that was used in the kitchen by the maid Winnie Annie that originally belonged to the gardener Ben Harper, who used to just great putty off the cellar window. You've got a new updated version of your book, Rich Little, People yeah. I've Known and Been. So yeah. uh, tell us about the book, because it's not really a biography, I understand. So I decided to get a new publisher and uh, add a couple of new chapters and got a new cover. And I've uh, just recently re-released it. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it does. Now, for those who are just coming across it right now, tell us what the book uh, comprises. It's not a biography. It's, um, as the title says, people I have known and been. So it's funny things that have happened with me and celebrities down through the years. And, you know, I talk about Dean Martin. I talk about Frank Sinatra, Orson Welles, Judy Garland, you know, I, I, Jackie Gleason, Jack Benny, George Burns, so many people that I knew and worked with back in the, in the early days. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's kind of a, uh, a humorous book. You know, it's not really a biography. I read within the, uh, the bio for you that you're quite a movie buff and some of these celebrities that you that are in your repertoire like arnold schwarzenegger or stallone or jack nicholson they have a larger than life personality is that what you look for when you're trying to decide who you'll uh impersonate oh yeah yeah somebody whose voice is very distinctive and the audience can pick it up very quickly you know that's why i said somebody like rock hudson or tab hunter or uh, some of the stars of the 50s uh uh, would be difficult to do because their voices aren't very distinctive. Mm -hmm. Well, what makes an Arnold Schwarzenegger stand out, if you will? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Well, of course, it's his accent, you know, <laughs> and um, he's larger than life and um, and everybody knows who he is. So he's a good subject to do. Here's a few things that bother me. <laughs> Why do they sterilize needles for lethal injections? 
one of my favorite impressions of you uh, that you do is uh, Johnny Carson. And you were on The Tonight Show quite a few times, weren't you? Yeah, I was on The Tonight Show, my gosh, uh, 40, 50 times. And I, I hosted uh, the show 20, 24 times, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, those were great days for me, you know. To appear on The Tonight Show was great because everybody watched it, you know. And um, that did a lot for me. I, I would think in my career, probably uh, The Tonight Show, the Dean Martin Rose and Hollywood Squares were probably uh, my three most important shows that I ever did. Uh, going back to Carson, and by the way, you would do me a wonderful favor by including a little bit of Carson in your answer, is um, Johnny seemed to enjoy having you on there, but I, I understand that eventually something happened. I'll leave it to you to, to relate well, that. Yeah, after appearing on The Tonight Show so many times and then hosting it, I, I became a no book on the show and I could never figure out why, but um, suddenly they weren't booking me on the show anymore. And I, I, I tried to find out the reason and never got an answer, but I did see Johnny uh, about a year before he passed away at a restaurant in Malibu. And he was very nice to me. He came up to me and he said, Rich, are, are you still, ah, uh, are you still doing me in your act? And I said, of course. I, I haven't been on television in years. That doesn't matter. I mean, people will always remember you, John. And he was quite shocked that I was still doing him. He thought that once he, you know, retired from doing The Tonight Show, no one would remember him. And it was kind of surprised me by that. And here we are uh, 50 years later and I'm still doing him. <laughs> I know you love me tonight, but will you respect me in the morning? <laughs> now, uh, I told you that your Carson impression is is my favorite of, of your vast repertoire. Who's your favorite or who are among the favorites that you enjoy doing? Well, I still enjoy doing Ronald Reagan. And um, I remember one time that President Reagan said to me, he said, Rich, you know, you do me better than I do. As a matter of fact, you do me so good that I was thinking when I pass away, I think they should bury you. Before I start speaking tonight, I, I would like to say something. <laughs> I am delighted to be here. But then at my age, hell, I'm delighted to be anywhere. How about Nixon? Because how, how did your impression of him go over? He didn't seem like the kind of guy that uh, had much of a sense of humor. If you No, will. he didn't have a sense of humor at all, you know. But uh, he was he was kind of stiff and, uh, and uh, you know, and I, I once did him in front of him down in San Clemente. I was invited to a party down there and uh, I ended up doing my impression of Nixon in front of him. And as I'm doing him, he turned to his wife, Pat, and said, why is this young man speaking on this strange voice? And, How do you go through the process of coming up with all of these impressions? Clearly, you know, you've ha got a great instrument with your voice. With 200 celebrities, it's such a vast repertoire. What process do you go through in your head to switch from Schwarzenegger to Stallone to Reagan to whomever? Yeah, well, I've always been one to do them quickly. You know, a lot of impersonators like Frank Gorshin and George Kirby and people back in the early days uh, would turn around and then uh, distort their face and uh, and uh, fix their hair and then turn back and do the impression. Yeah. But I was one that did them quickly. You know, I, I wanted to go from one voice to another. I mean, I would do George Burns one second, and then I would do John Wayne, and then I'd do Jack Nicholson, and, and then Jim, Jim, Jimmy Stewart, and then Dean Martin, and then John, John, Johnny Carson. Ah. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for this interview and also entertaining us throughout the years and going forward, too. It's just, it's a really specialized craft that... Um, you are the best at in terms of entertainment. And I want to thank you for my childhood growing up, listening to you do all of these, as well as, you know, entertaining the current crowd. Well, thank you, Tim. I enjoyed talking to you.
Yeah, so once again, we've been talking with Rich Little about his career. And also, we've got to do the plug for the book. People I've known and been, 200 of them, including 12 presidents going forward. Rich Little, thank you so very much. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. I know that the, the you know that, that I know that, that, that you know. And if you knew that I knew that, then, then, then we both would know if, if we knew. When people start, if people were to start using these and just give them a serious try out sure. on a brush, you know, because they're designed for a vertical jig fishing out on the brush, yeah. they will realize, wait a minute, this is something special here. Don't even want to know. Don't, don't oh, go in like I don't even the know. underpaid intern that you are. <laughs> What's in the box? What's in the box? Everything that I've learned here gave me confidence to actually start working on other people's cars. And if you don't feel like you know something, they'll teach you. You never feel like there's something you can't do. Getting, you know, the fundamentals I need to apply when I go into the field, I know I'll probably have a job before I even leave the program. If you're going for a degree, it's two years. That is a short span to learn, and classes are fast. Get you in, get you out, and get you the knowledge. Well, I feel like I'm already, you know, somewhat of a pro after yeah. coming in and, and seeing you school the guys in fishing. Gordon O'Neill, thank you so yeah. much for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I mean, you know, you're kind of like a rock star anymore. That fisherman that knows the right locations, mm -hmm. the right bait, and brings in the big catch. I mean, everybody's your friend all of a sudden, right? They want to <laughs> yeah. hang out with you. And, and they want to know what you're doing. That's right. <laughs> well, you've been doing this for some time. I, you, you mentioned um, developing your own like 20 years ago. Were you making your well, own Actually, at that time, I was Morris? experimenting at that time with, you know, different parts. And I would take uh, other people's uh, jigs and, okay. and modify them into something different. And, that would uh, actually work, right? Yeah, You're well, like, they were working, okay. but I was trying to make them work a little bit better. There so you go. I'd always uh, just play around with them, uh, mix some colors, or I add uh, uh, feather tails and stuff like that to them, and then go out and fish and catch fish. And okay. so I decided one day I'd just uh, try to make my own body. There you go. And uh, not have to deal with other people's, uh, you know, just scrap parts. And I mean, stuff why and, not? You know, it's the. Thunder Guppies Swimmer, I guess they are, mm -hmm. do they all have different little names? Well, or? yeah, um, okay. the jigs, uh, we, right. we call them vertical jig and lures because right. they're more like a, a lure than than a jig, you uh -huh. know, because they're, they're built more substantially and they last longer. You can take them off uh, and okay. trade them around, you know, where a lot of jigs. So let's uh, school people if they mm -hmm. don't know what a jig is. What okay. is that? A jig is actually like a, a head, which is a lead head and a hook mm -hmm. and a body. Right. And it could be uh, plastic. It could be, uh, you know, other materials. And okay. usually they have a, a plastic tail or a feather tail or what they call a stinger tail, which is just a narrowing down little it, um, it looks taper. like from this and that mm -hmm. that it's really you're just looking to catch that fish the, the eye of the fish yeah, i guess fish right are, uh, pretty color oriented and okay. most of the time they they sight feeders okay although if you add a little scent and a little flavor to it it just oh. makes it a little bit better Yes. All right. I guess I didn't know about that part. Yeah, I thought nice. you just kept them moving in the water or whatever. Then well, they think they'd have something. Oh, that's a part of it. But you know, they they sometimes they're a little finicky. So if you got a little scent on them, that they can actually smell, that'll make them go ahead and decide to eat. 
What do you put on these? Well, I have a little special ingredient that I make my own. Uh, some of the baits I use are store-bought ingredients that I mix and put in, but I got a If you tell uh, me you'd have to kill me kind of thing? Uh, yeah, he's not not really, it. but it's an organic material, and okay. it's, it's kind of gross. So I Is it? Wanna, okay, like guts and yeah, blood uh, and all well, that? Well, yes, it's yum, yum natural stuff, stuff that's, uh, you know, I, I, I mix it, and then I dry it, and then I grind it into a powder. Okay. And then I put a few more things in it, and then I put it in the bait. Awesome. Your story, if you go online, which your website, go ahead and remind people, mm -hmm. it's uh, thunderworm.co, right? Yes. Is that how it's they w find your website? www.thunderworm.co. That's it, yes. Okay, so if you read the About Us section, mm -hmm. as you said earlier, you've got enough of your own success stories, you know, and, and many times people want to recreate that for themselves. Mm -hmm. And you said that you've been offering that to people over the years, and they've shared their success stories with you. So we know that it's proven. Mm -hmm. We know that people spend a lot of money on fishing, don't they? They do, yes. So we just need them to know that they can spend like a lot of money on your lures and <laughs> yeah. probably be really successful. And um, Because it, it is scary, isn't it, taking that leap of faith and, and wanting to do this for yourself. Yeah, it is, and it's a lot of work, and it's a lot of ups and downs. You get a lot of roller coaster effect. Uh, there's a lot of people out there trying to knock you off and take what you got and that means run with it. So That means you're doing something uh, right. It keeps you nervous a lot of times, you know, because, I mean, after so many years, you just want success. That's and it. That's I got it. grandchildren now, and I feel like if I can get successful for this, with this, I can definitely guarantee them a, a chance to go to college. So that's it. That's my, I mean, and also, I, I just like to say this, I got a partner of mine mm -hmm. that's been sticking with me a lot closer than a brother. No. Name's Terry Lies. He he stuck with me through everything I've been through. We built a, a shop together. We took and expanded the shop together. Just him and I, basically. Awesome. And we built it into a place where we can make these lures. We can work. We got a bathroom. We, when we first started, we didn't even have a bathroom. Uh -oh. I, I used to say we had to run out to the trees or go to the <laughs> field station or go all the way home. But it's we happening. put a bathroom in. Now we got a working shop. That's awesome. And also, I got a little bait shop. So let's have some fun with them. What are okay. they designed to do? Well, this is uh, a feather tail. Once it gets a little water in that tail, see, it starts oh, okay. to, uh, it, right. it gets wet, and then you just you just put it in there, and you kind of like, and that tail action, you really... Uh, kind of showing off, aren't you? Yeah, and it just, you know, it's just the action of the bait and how that bait kind of just floats like neutrally buoyant, like, mm -hmm. a, like a minnow or a fish would be in the water. This is how it goes. It, it just... Uh, you drop it in, brown the brush, mm -hmm. and we also have that little weed guard on this bait. Okay. That allows that it to keep go through the brush without hanging up because oh, I see. all these are handmade. We okay. make them all. Uh, every little component we put together, we buy all our material from local vendors. Well, I can tell that these guys are already going to be hitting you up for a fishing trip now, too. So uh, I got a nice boat. Uh, <laughs> I'm not nothing special. Hope I get a better boat. Maybe these Thunder Guffins will buy me a There it is. Hey, you got to buy, like, how many? They have to buy a lot of these, right? And then we get another boat well, and we'll yeah, all go out. Yeah, yeah. I think, I, I, but I truly believe when people start, if people would have start using these and just give them a serious try sure. on the brush, you know, because sure. they're designed for vertical jig fishing out on the brush. Okay. They will realize, wait a minute, this is something special here. This well, thank you so much for sharing your story. We yes. hope that this sec, I mean, the spiel mm -hmm. is kind of a big deal. Okay. I mean, well, you get ready because all, I mean, the orders are coming. I'm just happy to be here. I mean, uh, this is a great blessing for me, a great opportunity. I really appreciate you, yes. uh, you know, having me on your show. Y'all very much. I think much. Shane alone is probably going to keep you in business. For <laughs> well, maybe me and Shane could uh, we could market something together. That's it. There you go. Well, and thank he, you. He so don't much. have to pay, and I can make some money. Hey, you heard that? You heard it here on the spiel, and we'll be right back. At all. Right here on the set of the spiel. I don't know what you're going to do with a tiny spatula. Uh oh. I'm going to win. He just made fun of your spatula. Let's go. That's sick. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Feel of that. I don't like sticking my hands in the boxes. I don't like that. What's in the box? Oh, okay. oh my god, what was that? <laughs>
I'm a patient of Dr. Hughes for the last eight years. Uh, he's really a good dentist. He's one of the best. I had a lot of work done, had implants put in, a lot of teeth pulled out. I was really in bad shape. He might have saved my life because if you don't get your dental together, you can have heart attacks, you can have a lot of problems. The man really took care of me and his staff. They are professional people. Every time I come in here, it was just like a friend or family member coming in. I felt relaxed. There's one winner, guys. There's rules. I don't think there are shit. There's no rules. And I he's still you. your uh, four minutes. Oh, four minutes, I got guys. It. I got it. We're good. We're good. Make it really interesting. We have to have a mystery. The burger battle secret ingredient. When we started this, I think I can speak for both of us, and we didn't have a favorite at the time. But now the competition's over, and I think we both do. I think we do. Oh goodness! Welcome in to the first ever big muddy burger battle. Right know, here on the set of the spiel. I don't know what you're going to do with a tiny spatula. Uh-oh. I'm going to win. He just made fun of your spatula. Let's go. Yeah. So anyway, okay. So the object of the game is, number one, to feed the crew today, right? Mm -hmm. That's that's the object of the game. But the other object is to impress Jacob, who has called himself, what is your title? The Burger Connoisseur. The Burger Ooh. Connoisseur. What does that mean? Of the country. So, okay, the rules are anything but simple. All right, you guys ready? Okay. You're gonna have 12 minutes. We're gonna put 12 minutes on the clock, okay? okay. You're gonna do whatever it is that you're gonna do, right? And then you're going to prepare it in such a fashion, if it is a burger on a bun and that's what you choose to serve to be a winner, did you just try to set He's me on fire? He's preheating that pan. He just, oh, Rob, you're cheating. Already cheating. Already cheating, okay. And when you put it out, for the connoisseur himself with his associates, and we try it, there's one winner, guys. And to make it really interesting, we have to have a mystery. The burger battle secret ingredient, one might say. You get to oh. choose two. Ooh. You have to choose have two, two of, them? of those. We have your Prairie Farms cream cheese, which I highly recommend. We have your Prairie Farms cottage cheese, again, recommendation. Mm -hmm. Or one of my favorites, Olives, oh, delish. Gosh. So think about it, guys. We give you no time to contemplate what you're gonna do from here. So the clock is on, 12 minutes. Let's go. What am I gonna do with olives? I, you're I, gonna use them. I don't know what, how am I gonna incorporate cottage cheese in a burger. Gosh. I don't even need this on yet. I still got, yeah, I don't even know what you're doing. Why'd you even turn it on? Why'd you even come here? Guys, do you Excuse know me. how long you get bragging rights if you do a great job here? All of time. All of time, because I don't know that we'll Did do you a see second. My butter? <laughs> I don't even know what He's you're He's not going to play fair. You know this to be true. It's ridiculous. This is going to be the butteriest burger. No doubt, right. man. That Has that been done before? The, the buttery butter burger? burger? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be exactly. Rob's got about eight tablespoons, so I mean, hopefully, no one here has heart a heart condition. Hey, stop counting my butter spoons. Hogs raised right here in Southern Illinois. Mm -hmm. That's what you wanted, right? Lucas yeah, Butler. I want pickle juice in my bacon. Okay. You're right. All right, guys, you're at you're squarely ten at ten. Already? Ten minutes. That ten tells minutes you left, how right? fast yeah. two goes by. All right. For at least. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think they plan to dress them similarly, but it'll it'll all come down to what they put in their meat, how they prepare oh, I've got, it. I've got a secret ingredient. Well, Just you better try. have two. Rob doesn't even know. You better have two. I, I have. Well, I have I have another plan. Because that will Sorry, disqualify that. you if you do not get two right, of, of those ingredients into your burger. Let's just get this over to the side. Now, Rob was a little disappointed that it was already patty. Oh, look at him. Okay, I think the salt, the salt trick's been done. The salt yeah. bay. Hold on, hold on. I gotta, do it with, salt bay. I gotta do it with salt. That's pretty good. Okay, that's a lot of salt, boo. Okay. No, it's not. Okay. Get that going. Man, I, need some... I do think it's interesting that you guys both chose the cream cheese. Well, I mean, the only other option is the cottage cheese right now. Yeah. I'll just leave that because that's coming later. 
Hey, don't discount the olives, man. I'm not a fan of olives. Oh, I love olives. Like in general. I but do. I do cream. I just want to let you guys know. I have no idea cheese. what I'm doing. Look at that technique. They're just slinging oh, stuff oh. everywhere. Okay. All I right. can't tell you if this is going to be We down to like not. eight? Uh, we're actually down to uh, seven. Woo, seven. Seven, seven minutes. minutes. Or probably well done. I think we should couple these. Oh, look at Shane All going right. in with the olives. Rob's thinking. All right, there's my two ingredients. So that's good. You got two of the three. Two of the three. That's only, that's what's required. Two of the three. Okay. That's the vibe you're getting. Lucas, what's your time? Uh, just under six minutes. Okay. Six minutes. Okay. Just curious, why'd you both go with the cream cheese? So my plan right now, I've got a little concoction I'm gonna cook up with that cream cheese. Okay. Which I think is gonna give it a little more body. Oh yeah. To the burger, fries. you always want like a little, I, I usually like mayonnaise, uh, adds a little extra fat yes. to the bite, but the cream cheese will really kind of give it that I'm feeling that. Manage. I'm feeling that. I'm excited. And I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Rush the cottage cheese in the pan? Yep. All right, guys. All right, my guy. Whatever, whatever you're going to go with. So the burger battle, we did not say needs to be pretty, right? No, we really didn't. We really didn't. Ow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. Burgers are messy. <laughs> Burgers are messy. Just like this competition. Comp? Hey. All right, let's get that bacon out. All right. So, nice. you always got to get the bacon on the paper towels because once yes. that grease comes off, that's what makes it crispy. Oh. It's not burning it to a crisp and to a, a burnt bacon Very cracker. nice. Very nice. Yes. We, I we lost track of what I was doing, to be honest with you. I forgot that you I was even on the butter on top of that? Nope. Is hey, that you, worry, you worry about your own oh, stuff. Oh, you're right. You're right. No, you're right. <laughs> oh. Oh, Shane coming in clutch. I was just thinking in my head. Oh. I really didn't do that. It's a missed opportunity. Oh. I was planning on it. I just have too much butter. Three, Three minutes. minutes. Okay, we're good. We're still good. We're still fine. Now, to win, it has to be assembled on your block. Of course. Assembled on your block and Thank edible. You, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we throw me two buns? Yep. Oh, you know what? Oh, okay. He was going to get extra points, but not anymore. He threw it at him. All right. These okay. are going to be right. so soggy. I'm going to put them on here. Time. Oh, my gosh. Two minutes. We're coming down to the... Uh, did you just move my bun? I was going to take it. How dare you? Oh, wait. Excuse me. Two minutes. Excuse me. The... No, but like, excuse me, though. This okay. Guy. No, no. Get in there, Shane. This guy. Fight for yours. Fight for what's yours. Okay, and are you sure? It is. For yeah. our garlic burger. Oh. That'll do it, baby. Come on, with well, the cream cheese. Do it. Coming back. Shane, if I'm not mistaken, you did you chose olives, right? I did choose olives. Ow. Before going in. Are you allergic to olives? That would not that be good. Would, that would kind of put a damper on it. Well, no, they're delish. Try well, them. I don't think you're going to taste as much of the, the bitter as you think you are. I'm right, going to sample. I'm happy about it. 60 seconds. How, what? Here we go. Seconds. Oh, Rob straight in coming up with some stuff on top there. Let's go. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, okay. Look at, look at this beauty here. Get on Shane. Look at oh, that. No. Look at the perfection. Okay. Rob Time. definitely, oh, what? Time? Time. 35, seconds. 35 seconds. We're good, we're good, we're good. All right. Look at this. I'm okay. loving this. A couple more, a little more. That'll do it. Garlic habanero. So we didn't, come in, we didn't come in with any ketchup. We don't nope. need any mustard. Nope. This, this occasion burger, All we're right. just going to highlight what we got what here. But you got 10? There. Is that it? They're greasy. Nine. Eight. All right, hands down. Clean up your section. Hope you look somewhat presentable. That's it. That's it. All right. I mean, do we really do we really need to huddle? I, I, I you know look, what? I, when we started this, I think I can speak for both of us, and we didn't have a favorite at the time. But now the competition's over, and I think we both do. I think we do. I'm shaking. You are scared. 
I thought you'd be braver than no. you are. Just be careful. I'm Brandon Stover, and I am the lead criminal justice instructor here at John A. Logan College. I worked in law enforcement for an extended period of time before I came here to teach uh, criminal justice at John A. Logan. I would say it's very inspiring, especially since he's dibbled and dabbled in multiple things within the corrections field, and he can tell us real life stories about his experience. It's really encouraging, and it really just pushes and motivates me to really want to go into the field. My name is Dr. Siddharth Chandra. If you are depressed or if you have any serious mental health issues, it affects everything you do, from everyone you talk to, your interactions, the way you feel, whether you can work or not. You know, the thing about mental health is, is it's basically the software that runs your entire body. Where we're located and the resources we have available to us, we're usually able to get people in within a couple of days, the same day sometimes. We can do whatever we need to do to make sure that your mental health is well taken care of. So this oh, is, is it. We, we just have one that each. That is it. Okay. All right. Go ahead, man. All right. Yeah, that's so that's so got the cream cheese, got the Cajun sure. bacon, with a little bit of olives on on the cream cheese there. Oh. And that is actually the pork patty. This is a solid pork mm -hmm. patty burger. Mm -hmm. Right amount of crispiness on the it's inside. It's juicy. It's crispy. It's mm -hmm. crunchy. The, mm -hmm. All the ingredients the work. I wouldn't have known there were olives in it no unless I watched olives. you do it, mm -hmm. which is a plus for me. Mm -hmm. That's kind of cheating, I think, because you hide it. You do like mm -hmm. I use tiny, it. tiny little bit. I know because I can see them. I just no, not tasting them. No, he used quite a bit. He sliced up probably three or four. That's excellent. That's a solid effort. But yeah, I think everything just comes together with this. It's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as far as like the pork goes, I mean, having local like quality pork really yeah. helps. It does. Yeah, anytime, have it anytime in, in that. It's like really juicy though, not dry. The cream cheese, everything kind of. Is that because it's it. pork burger and this is beef? That's say? beef. Yeah, that was a pork one. I think we should try this one. Okay. Too. Okay. Let's do that. Again, <clears throat> local beef, same thing, just quality. Man, I tell you what, right. it is moist. Oh, there you go. Cheers. Mm. Ah. Wow. Mm. Mm. Dare I say I like the pork one a little bit more? Really? The yeah. pork had a lot of flavor in it, mm. um, but I like them equally. I think they're very good. I think, I think they're, I think really they're great both fantastic, yeah. This is the uh, I don't know what I'm doing burger because um, I, I literally a few times. just threw stuff into a pan and hoped it worked out. And then I used the secret ingredient as a merit. I don't know what it's called, some kind of topping. And then I salt made it. So that should give me extra points. Definitely style <clears throat> points. Angie, right off the bat, I'm, I don't have a game plan on how I'm going to eat this. No, I don't either. You I, could use your mouth. I'm a little I, concerned. I think I'm just going to try and survive. Yeah. And I really don't appreciate that he prefaced it with the V word. It bold delivery. Bold delivery. But if thank you, John. Sometimes George. that pays off. Let's find out. Right. Let's see if I can even cut this bacon. Also, right, there back. is a little bit of a surprise. I don't know if you noticed, but okay. Yeah. Okay, that was big. Did you see that, Shane? I, I haven't seen the cross section. Look. Although oh. it didn't have. Oh wow. Okay. Shane, okay. It didn't All have right. enough time to melt. But, uh, I mean, we're not going to hold that against Well, let's look at the, the ways that they prepared it. Shane built his outside of the pan. Mm -hmm. Rob built his in the pan. Mm -hmm. what, what do those have to say about the, the flavors? Correct, so correct. I just really out. feel like for mainstream, man, that cottage cheese is going to have to go inside. I, I, think, I think everyone's going to have to get on board with this. My, so my, <laughs> philosophy, my philosophy is the messier it is, the better it tastes. I, I think this is a two-hand job. I'm Did you going wash your hands, uh, Rob? Top and no. bottom here. He never washed his hands. Great. Right. Salmon ill for everybody. Here you go. Okay. Yeah, hopefully those are done. Thank you very much. They look done. They are look they done. little pinkish? Enough that I'm not worried. Uh. All right. And, oh, uh, I didn't mean to give you that much of a head start. Uh. Yeah, I have no idea if it's going to be good or not. Mm. Okay. It's really creamy. Like a lot of cheese. <laughs> like yeah. a lot, a lot of cheese. And a lot I, of salt. Yeah. A lot of salt there. That, the difference, I think, to me the most is the texture. Mm. I think I think there's more uh, 
lack of better word, goopy materials mm -hmm. in this one than the last one. That's my. That's the way I like it. I am struggling to find a place to put this down. Though, okay. So. That that worked. I mean, do we really do we really need to huddle? I, 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 you know look, what? I, when we started this, I think I can speak for both of us, and we didn't have a favorite at the time. But now the competition's over, and I think we both do. I think we do. Shane, congratulations. Thank you. Yes! <laughs> on the first winner <laughs> yes. of Shane. the Burger yes. Battle. Burger Battle. I respect both first of your champion. creativity. Rob, really love the, Rob the trying something and, that yeah. I've never seen before. Yes. You said, why do the ingredients have to be in between the bun? Right. Let's right. put it on top. Right. Just take some risks. <laughs> you said, this it looks take some better. Risks. Yeah. You gave so. it the penthouse suite. Shane. Sometimes traditional gets the win. Good job, yeah. guys. All right, let's fry if it, it more because we got a whole crew to, to feed. All right. Autobots. We'll be right back. Good job. That was fun. First thing, you stick your hand down there. And it's just nerve wracking. We're killing it. Have you even gotten one yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not counting on you to protect me in case something bites me. Well, whatever bites you, I'm out. Don't. So I, I think it just like more or less like started as a joke and everything. Like, it, thankfully, the power of the Wu Tang helped us with this. Yes, the power <laughs> of the Wu Tang. This will give you the ability to chew and eat just like you have a third set of teeth. Over the course of the past 20 years, I became trained in implant dentistry. Those surgeries can be very invasive. IV sedation is an ideal thing for those patients that are having more invasive procedures. The doctor needs to be well trained. You need to have a trained staff to get through their appointments smoothly and comfortably. See the leader in dental implants and sedation dentistry, Hughes Dental Arts Center. One of the things we do for the communities we serve is we offer free physicals, sports and school physicals, and dental care, as you know, children as they start entering their ages to go into school, they have to have a free exam. We want to give back. We live here. Our families live here. Our children go to school here, our grandchildren. This is where our roots are. We give back, and that's what this CRHPC is about, is giving back. Welcome back to the spiel. We have another game for you. It is called Fun Factor. We are gonna put things in the box and we're gonna have to have them stick their hands in the box, touch it and try to guess what it is. Now, there's a little bit of a difference to this game. They are gonna work together instead of competing to try to figure out what's yeah. in the box. What's in the box? I'm gonna put the first item in the box. I need you guys to face this way. Oh, I'm high key scared, Angie. High key, low key, low key. I'm high, high key. key. See, we don't even speak the same language. No, it's not. It's a generational divide. I'm not going first. All right. There is nothing in the box that will hurt you. Okay? So don't there worry about that. There better not be any cockroaches, worms, snakes. All right. So the first teeth. item, the first item is in there. Who wants to go first? Angie. Ladies first. I'm being nice. I'm, I'm already being nominated. Signed, sealed, delivered. You are up. I, I'm All right, being, Riley, you got this. I was, being, got I was this. trying to be polite. I, Let's go, I believe in you. Let's go, right. I believe in you. Okay. You got Let's this. Go, Don't look. What is it? Oh, dude, I'm so scared. Oh, stop. <laughs> stop. Just, what touched you? I'm so scared. Did something bite you? No, not yet. Did it crawl? Not yet. Jeez, what is it? <laughs> oh, it's warm. Stop. Yo. Don't look in there. Figure it out. Keep going. This is terrible. Oh! Stop, Riley. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh! <laughs> oh, that's easy. Noodles. That's what, that's what nice. I thought, too. I, I stuck my hand in there. I was like, oh, it's warm. No. All right. That was freaky no. dinky. I didn't like I know. that. I was not a fan. So you're going to go first this time, right? No. Ah, come on. Always first. But hey, you're the lady. To be. i got to be polite here. Yeah. I'm nervous. You, go. Get it, get it, get it, get oh, it. Dude, just go in. Dude, go in like the me. man you are. Get it. 
I don't even want to know. Don't, don't go know. in like the know. underpaid intern that you are. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> You do? Yeah. All right, just but, go but no, you gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go. Yeah, you gotta he go. Knows. Nope. nope. You gotta go. You have to go. Yeah! Wait. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? You gotta find out. You gotta keep going. I don't like prickly, sticky, crawly thingies. Crunchy. Oh, it's moving. Oh, I know this. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Yep. Nice. <laughs> it's like nerve wracking at first, and you stick your hand down there. And it's just nerve wracking. We're killing it. Have you even gotten one yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not counting on you to protect me in case something bites me. Well, whatever bites you, I'm out. Don't look in. It's <sighs> my least favorite thing to do. You get a big hamper. Nervous, <laughs> Is that split pea soup? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. You know what it is? The thing, like some, those small little eyeball things. Yeah, the eyeballs yeah. that you stick on things. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. Or split yeah, yeah, pea yeah. soup. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's impressive. Yeah. Wow. I didn't think about that, yeah. It is the little eyeballs. Yeah, yes. I knew that's what it was, man. But who would have thought you would have bought a bunch of those? Touch some eyeballs. How does that feel? That was sick. Thank God they were squishy, right? Oh, no. Like the real eyeballs. Ooh. Like on the real fear factor. Or the real person. And then you have to eat them, right? You're going, oh, no. Oh, gosh. Just kidding. <laughs> Just go. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> You're about to get a bow. Dude, don't do that crap. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> what is that? Feel of that. Go. Squish it. Ew. Squish. What is it? Play Doh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Play Doh. I don't like sticking my hands in the I boxes. I don't like that. I get the heebie jeebies. I, I got the heebie jeebies the whole time I'm doing this. Ugh. Go very. Very slow. Why is it lit up? It, it's not. What are you talking about? <clears throat> there's something that's lit up. They, they're swimming around in there. There's no. Oh, there's, <laughs> there's, 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 there's nothing they in are. that. They are. They're swimming around in there. I already know Yo, what it is. Go ahead. What is it? <laughs> Ooh, that one went to the bottom. Look at it. Oh yeah. gosh, what, where, it's what? On its, it's on its you way back up. You said it does not. <laughs> I said it's not, things going to hurt you. Just do it. <laughs> oh, it's don't, warm. Don't be aggressive with Dude, don't warm. kill them. God. Kill I gotta, what? I got to return them. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh my god, what was that? <laughs> Something moved. No, I gotta put my hand in there. Something moved. Uh, go. Go. Get in there. I'm go scared. On. Okay, I'll go in on top. Go. Oh! Go. <laughs> like, Did it come up? Yeah. Uh, no, I don't like that. There's one no. at the top and one at the bottom. Uh, we don't do anything that might be living. Um, just, just do I it. I think it's some type of fish. It's a fish. Let's, let's guess. Some type of it's fish. It's a fish? It lives in the sea. Okay, you ready? Yes. It's a squid. It's oh, jellyfish. It's jellyfish. <laughs> is, it, is it fake jellyfish? They, these are fake. They're not you real. You better be glad. Oh, they my are God. Real. Those are very good. Those are, yeah. One right, more? We have, we have one more Those thing. are really great jellyfish, though. Keep those. Those can be the office pet. Go those are nice. Take them. Let's the do one? that. They really broke the rules there. <clears throat> well, no. It wasn't really. I think they're going above and beyond their abilities. Their abilities, okay. Yeah, maybe just a little bit. But I'm shaking. You are scared. I thought you'd be braver than no. you are. Just be careful. You act like I'm gonna go in on a machete. We do it at some time. <laughs> get out of here with that. I'm scared. I'm scared. Go, get in there. Ah! Oh, if this bites me, I'm gonna cry. Where's the I don't know, but I think. <laughs> <laughs> Quit looking, Riley. You're scared. I know that's why I'm scared. What is it, Riley? I, I, don't, I don't know. That's your finger. <laughs> that's yours, Riley. <laughs> Stop it. I don't know what it is. This is air. There's nothing Good there. job. These, oh, these geese. <laughs> you pretty much got them all right. We are the reigning. I don't know what about raining, it but called? it's a raining, terrified in the box. So how people sweaty thingy. are you? Oh yeah, Dude, he's I'm freaking out, man. Oh wow, yeah. I thought he was brave. Yeah, what did you learn from this? Uh, uh, your mama tells you to keep your hands to yourself for a reason. <laughs> don't put your hands in the box with Angie. <laughs> that's very specific. That's, that's very so specific. And yes. we'll be right back. Yes, Brandon's here. He wants the last word. There's more to say. There's more to say. <laughs> really. As he sits there quietly. <laughs> <laughs>
excited because this is part of the chain that we hope to encircle Southern Illinois with and it's one step forward in that direction. I'm hoping that eventually that you'll be treated on par and when that happens, I will be really happy. And just glad to be a part of this expansion and so excited to see that uh, mental health is something that's a top priority of these clinics and of the state of Illinois to do what we can for our citizens that need it mostly. At John A. Logan, I teach about half of all the classes that are offered in construction management. And this is my fourth year. I've got 20 years of experience in the field in, in construction. I, uh, I tell all my students that you get what you want out of this program. You get what you put into it. If you come in and go really hard and are here every day and do the work, this program will make you successful. Coming through. Okay, you know, there's a story with everything, and these shoes are no different. I mean, what's up? Wu Tang? Yes. So it, Emily started it. She sent you a text. Yes. And she had found them in Branson. And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> That's how you always reference or answer when we say, <laughs> go ahead and, and, and fill people in a little bit. So I, I think it just like more or less like started as a joke and everything. Like thankfully the power of the Wu-Tang helped us with this. Yes, the power <laughs> of Wu-Tang. And I think that's your from Christmas even, isn't that what you, it took yes. you like 10 <laughs> seconds to paint your, your uh, yeah, it was really, really good. But yeah, it's uh, probably one of my favorite albums is uh, their first one with uh, their hit song Cream on it, Cash Rules Everything Around Me. And okay. it's, yeah, it's just something I always listen to while I'm working and I always like the beats that go with it. They're, uh, as it's back in like the early 90s, late 80s, so it's like before everything is where it is now in hip hop. I, I, I can tell lovers. he's representing because he's got his shoes that was brought about somewhat from the group. And then the shirt, I don't have a shirt, 21 Pineapple Shirt Company, our good buddy Nate. Absolutely. How did you score merch, dude? Uh, well, uh, I took a page from your playbook. What's that? When in doubt, just ask. Just ask. There it is. <laughs> I forgot to ask for the shirt. I'm very upset. And um, but very cool, very cool shirt. Oh, it's especially it's sweltering outside, and like the breeze, the little breeze that is there mm -hmm. just blows right through it. And I mean, I, I'm cool and chill you as are. a pineapple outside. And I think that's his whole. Isn't that what he says? Just don't suck people. Be really nice or yeah, be cool. Yeah, actually, be uh, kind. Be kind. Right here on the tag. Be a good human. Oh, be a good human. We could just close right there, couldn't we, Rob? We sure could. But why would we? I mean, really, I, I feel like Brandon's here and he wants the last word. There's more to say. There's more to say. <laughs> really? As he sits there quietly. Yes. <laughs> About the show that you just watched that was great. And it was. you should come back next time. You should. Because it'll also be great. Oh, man. That was and so poignant. Be a good human, be right? Good That's human. what it says. Just Don't be a stop. good human. Yes, very good. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Hey guys, welcome to the set of the spiel. We're gonna be showing you some behind the scenes, so let's get going. Creative problems require creative solutions. Segment. Uh, 
are we setting up for right now? We're setting up for the fun factor segment where you're gonna stick your hand in the box. What's in the box? What are you looking at? Political stuff. Why is there a pineapple on the touchline? It's good for your skin. <laughs> Hopefully, oh no.